Hey, welcome to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and this is the space to be for high vibe people looking to create a beautiful life and business. Let's do this. Welcome back to the podcast, my beautiful friends. I'm Letitia Ringe, your coach, and today we are talking about five things you probably don't know about red flags. I'm going to give you everything you need to approach the subject of red flags in a conscious way. That means one where you're conscious of how your own stuff, your own relationship history, your own experiences, your own projections are affecting the assumptions you make about others when it comes to red flags. The reason for this is I almost missed out on my current relationship with my amazing boyfriend because of assumptions I made about red flags. And they were quite innocent ones, ones that if I had been speaking to a friend or if I had been coaching a client, my opinion would have been that this is a red flag and to proceed with caution. However, I learned a really, really, really powerful lesson during that process that actually the red flag in the situation was really my own brain searching for the red flags above all else. And it actually indicated to me another issue, which was that actually I was the red flag. I was the one with the issue that I was projecting onto the person in front of me. This is very, very common to do. And I would say in our industry of personal development, if you're, you know, someone who's on the path, which will be all of you listening to this podcast, uh, or you work in personal development, you probably are getting really, really good at spotting patterns and trends. And so our work needs to be on checking ourselves in those patterns and trends that we're noticing to make sure that we're actually doing our due diligence to to notice where that is simply our own projection from our own relationship experiences or our experiences as children or with our parents and caretakers and where we actually are then checking those assumptions with reality by also having conversations with the person in front of us to actually truly understand them. So, The majority of what you're going to learn in today's episode is more for those of you who are already primed to be looking for red flags. If you are someone that has a history of not noticing red flags and you end up in toxic relationships where maybe your friends and family have said there were some really clear, serious red flags right from the beginning, then some of the tips that I'm going to share today are less important for you, though they will also help you to approach the way you look for red flags in a conscious way, which is really, really important. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't look for red flags, okay? Your brain is going to do that naturally anyway. And mostly what we're looking for are signs of commitment. We want to know, like, is this a waste of our time or is it not? And so for efficiency, your brain is going to look for any indicators of how a person may not be suitable for the kind of relationship you want. So in order to look for red flags in a really conscious way, the first thing you need to know is what am I actually looking for? So what kind of relationship do I want to be in? What relationship do I want to experience? This is a different question perhaps to the answers that came up in the previous episode when we spoke about what's your type. In that episode, we're talking about the type of partner you want to be in relationship with and the type of relationship you want to experience. But something we didn't speak to is what is the container that you want to be in? So your uh, red flags would probably be about that. Is this person able to be in the container that I want to be in? And are they also able to create the relationship that I want to experience? So commitment becomes a really important subject here, particularly for those of you who want to be in a committed relationship. And when we speak about red flags, we're usually talking about any signs that a person is not able to commit to the relationship we want to be in right now. So here are the five things you need to know in that context. Number one, if you look for red flags, then you will find them. (laughs) So 
If we are priming our brain to look for all the ways a person is not ready or able to commit to us, guess what we will see in all of the people that we date and the person or people that we're in relationships with. We will see all of those indicators that they are not ready for commitment. And guess what the brain doesn't do then? It doesn't look for all the signs of how a person is ready to commit. So the way that we look at the world and that is always shaped by the story we're telling ourselves. Whatever story you tell yourself is what your brain will find evidence of. So if I want to create a committed relationship, I want to tell my brain that there are plenty of people out there who are ready for commitment. I want to look for all the signs of commitment. But because I'm coming from a fear-based perspective and perhaps because I'm not ready for commitment, what I'm going to see is all the indicators of that person not being ready for commitment. So I completely ignore what I'm actually looking for. And instead, it's like I turn up the volume on all the things I don't want to create. And this is what we all do across our life in all areas of life. We are coming from a fear-based perspective. So all we see is all the things that we don't want to create and therefore we create them. This is manifestation 101. And this is what we do in the context of red flags too. So a really, really helpful conscious shift you can make on the subject of red flags is just to ask yourself, what are the green flags that I'm actually looking for? And Start looking for green flags just as much as you're looking for red flags. That would be a really, really helpful balance. And just by doing that, you'll notice how much your experience changes because probably it's 0% right now that you're looking for green flags. In fact, during the dating process, I noticed that I needed to focus more on what I wanted to create rather than all of the red flags, which I was excellent at noticing and looking for (laughs) with my amazing ability to spot patterns and trends in people in front of me that I realized I needed to have a practice after every single date I went on to notice all of the uh, good things, right? All of the positive indicators. So I would literally write them down after every date. And that is really what I was talking about as well when we discussed focusing on what you want in a previous episode, which I'll link in the show notes to this podcast in case you haven't yet listened to that episode. So look for green flags as much as you do red flags. That's point number one. Point number two is that red flags are starting points for conversations, not closed doors. <laughs> so you need to check yourself. You don't know everything about this person. And just because you've spotted a pattern or a trend that seems to be an indicator that someone is not ready for commitment or not ready to be in the kind of relationship that you want, you need to make sure you understand that that is an assumption you're making. So that is step number one. Step number two is to actually have a conversation with the person to check yourself, to find out what the reality actually is and, and what they've learned through the experience that you're possibly making an assumption about and assuming that that means they're not ready for commitment. We can literally find benefits to support our green flags from all all situations. So you got to be extra careful with those red flags that we commonly think indicate someone has a fear of commitment or isn't ready for for commitment. An example of this is you might be uh, talking to someone who hasn't ever experienced a long-term relationship and you want to be in a long-term relationship. This was the experience for me. So when I was dating my partner and he told me he hadn't been in a long-term relationship, before, I saw that as a red flag. Yeah. But what I didn't see was that the reason he'd been in a series of short-term relationships was more to do with the fact that he was really aware of what he wanted in a partner rather than his ability to be in a long-term committed relationship. 
On the other side of that, I had just gotten out in the past year from a long-term relationship of 10 years, and I didn't realize that perhaps that could be perceived as a red flag too. Was I really ready to be in another relationship? What experience did I really have after being with one person for 10 years? Now, No matter what the fact is, you can find advantages and disadvantages about it. So I went into the dating process believing I've been in a 10-year relationship, so I know how to be in a committed relationship. I also know exactly what I'm looking for because I just left an amazing relationship with an amazing man because of very specific things that I know that I need at this point in my life. So I was able to see my own circumstance and the benefits of it. And therefore the energy I showed up in was one where that wasn't an issue. And I was able to talk about it really openly. So that red flag became a green flag. So just notice with the people that you're speaking with, or perhaps you're in a relationship with someone right now, and you think that they're showing signs of red flags, perhaps you're making an assumption that is more to do with your own fear of not being in a relationship that of not finding the love you desire or someone leaving you or whatever the fear actually is. And that's coming from you. It's coming from your own uh, fears that are from maybe experiences you've had in childhood or with previous partners. And then you project that onto your partner. It becomes an expectation rather than the reality. So you need to actually have a conversation. And this is very important to know how to approach the conversation. You can't go in saying, oh, you've got a fear of commitment because of X, Y, Z, or, you know, or in a combative way where it's going to put the person on the defensive, that will never get them to share the reality with you. Instead, you need to approach the conversation seeking to understand, truly approaching it from a place of curiosity, from a place of openness, from a place of connection, rather than a place of separation or a place of accusation. That is going to lead you to answers that you probably didn't expect and, of course, a deeper understanding of the person in front of you. Number three, most red flags are your own projections. The question you can ask yourself to find out whether you might be projecting onto the person in front of you is, does this fact or does this behavior or does this person even remind you of someone or something you've experienced? In fact, you could even go further and ask, do I have a history with this red flag personally? Now, this is really important because there is a pattern that shows up with all of us in our relationships. And that is in some way we are unconsciously seeking to resolve issues from childhood with our romantic partners. So unconsciously our brain is either looking for people who are very similar to one or both of our parents or the polar opposite. And all of this reference point is about your parents or your primary caretakers, whoever those significant people were to you as a child. And so because the brain, the old part of the brain, the unconscious part of the brain wants comfort, wants familiarity, even if that isn't good for you or wasn't something positive that you experienced, it's actually trying to recreate that situation or to resolve it by having someone who is the complete opposite and would never put you in the situation that you experienced as a child. Even if that situation, by the way, was something that you don't perceive as negative, there all of us have got unresolved childhood needs that we're looking to resolve in our romantic relationships. So if it's a red flag, it could be because you're projecting that childhood experience or even experiences with previous partners onto this person in front of you. And and that's what you're seeing rather than the reality and the person in front of you. So it's very, very important to check yourself as well. Do I have a history with this and am I projecting projecting my experiences of this particular fact or behavior or topic onto the person in front of me? Number four, we could all 
be a red flag if we choose to be one. So just like that example I gave you of when I was dating again after a 10-year relationship, it was within one year of my um, break up with my partner that I started dating again. Now we all have these like rules of thumb about duration of time when it comes to how long a person's been out of a relationship for, how how long they've been in relationships for, and we have these like unsaid rules about what the standard is, like how how long someone needs to be out of a relationship. I think that the rule around that is around one year, but like, why is that the rule? (laughs) Someone could not be ready for a relationship after two years. There are people out there who have never dated again, seriously, after five years, maybe even longer because they haven't done the work they need to do to properly heal and grieve that relationship. And if that's you, my beautiful friend, I have a, a podcast, in fact, several podcast episodes on that exact topic on this podcast. And I'll link those in the show notes for you as well. So, and then in terms of the length of relationship that's classified as long-term, maybe that's two years, but again, where did that come from? Was the quality of the relationship the person was in for two years or more one that you want to emulate? Length of time has got nothing to do with that. So we have to be really, really, really careful of the unwritten rules we've all agreed to unconsciously on this subject. And then you want to ask yourself, what are the benefits of this situation the person's been in? That will give you a whole other perspective to the fact or the behavior that you're judging. And notice that you're doing this about yourself too. So, so many of the amazing people that I work with also see their situation as a red flag, (laughs) whether they're aware of it or not. They say things like, maybe I'm too old. Maybe I haven't had enough long-term relationships. uh, Maybe I've not been out of my relationship for long enough. Maybe I've been out of a relationship for too long and I haven't had a relationship for a long time. And that's a red flag. I think that the conversation about attachment styles as well is also lending conversations and tendencies to see anything other than secure attachment as a red flag as well. I want you all to know that that is not a red flag. If your attachment style is avoidant, anxious avoidant or anxious and you are seeing that as a red flag or you're judging other people who have those attachment styles as having red flags because of it, I want you to remind yourself that this is about your childhood. This is about the way you learned to deal with safety and fear as a child. And the way you respond to that is your attachment style. So when you're aware of that in a conscious romantic relationship, you know how you respond to fear and how you seek safety. And so you're able to do it in a healthy way, even if your tendency and attachment style is avoidant, anxious, avoidant, or anxious. That is what is needed. It's understanding. You don't have to come from a secure place naturally to be able to have an amazing committed relationship. It's truly just about awareness. When you know what your attachment style is, you can support yourself to respond in a way that is healthy and conscious. That is really what we should all be working to, not becoming the secure attaches. Okay, so have a look at how you're judging yourself as well as how you're judging others and ask yourself, could there be another perspective here that I haven't considered? What are the benefits of this person's behavior or situation? And then finally, number five, red flags might say more about your own level of commitment to love than the person that you're judging. Now, this is especially true for all of you perfectionists out there, for all of you who see red flags within yourself, see red flags in others. And what does that do? I always love the quote, follow the money. So (laughs) we can use this same sentiment when we think about red flags, but instead of following the money, we're following the outcome. What does that outcome, what is the outcome of that behavior? It's that you don't allow yourself to fully commit to a relationship. 
Yeah. Now, why are you doing that when you say you really want a relationship? It's because of your fear of commitment. And so that is the work that needs to be done. So back to my own personal example, where my brain at the beginning of dating was looking for red flags and seeing them everywhere. Why was it doing that? Once I realized that that was what was happening, I started to look at my own red flags and I realized, well, actually a red flag for me could be the fact that I'm traveling right now, which could indicate a fear of commitment. And why am I prioritizing traveling over actually pursuing a connection with someone who could be a potential romantic partner. I realized, hey, I'm the one with fear of commitment and that is why it's all I'm seeing in this person in front of me. So that was a really beautiful moment. I had the awareness and then I was able to do the work to resolve that. And I was quickly able to resolve that within a month. I had resolved my own fear of commitment, which allowed me to then take the steps I needed to take to pursue the romantic connection with the amazing man in front of me. So follow the money. Now I took this so seriously that I actually made a rule with myself that I couldn't talk to anyone about the relationship with the person that I was dating at that time, because I noticed that every time I spoke about it to other people, because I didn't want to look stupid, I would tell them about how amazing it's going and how amazing he is. And then I'd always add a caveat about the red flags. And I would do that because I was worried that if they happened, I would look silly, right? But then I realized I kept telling this story, which was only perpetuating their own pattern for looking for red flags within my brain. And it was also affecting me because it was then ensuring that I always had one foot out of the relationship. So I made a rule that I wouldn't talk about it because I couldn't trust myself not to go there. And then that became a really funny situation to be in because I would tell my friends and my family, yeah, I'm still dating this guy, but I'm just letting you know that I'm not going to talk about it. And it's, and it's because of this. And they, they were really supportive and said, no worries, Letitia, but I felt really bad, right? Because I felt like I wanted to let them in on what was happening, but I knew that I couldn't trust myself not to talk about those things. And that ended up being such a, an important moment along my journey. It allowed me to have the experience with the person in front of me and truly be present and get to know them rather than living in the past and projecting my past onto our future. And it made all the difference. So my beautiful friends, I want to leave you with a summary of the questions to ask yourself and also a reminder that the action to take here is really to check yourself and also have a conscious conversation with the human in front of you. Here are the questions. What are the green flags you're looking for? What green flags have I seen in this person? Do I have a history with this red flag that I'm seeing? What are the advantages to my own red flags? What are these red flags that I'm seeing either within myself or the person in front of me protecting me from? These questions will help you get another perspective on the red flags, which is what being in a conscious romantic relationship is all about. It's not about the absence of red flags. It's not about the absence of conflict or problems. We are all humans. It is about being aware of how our stuff is being projected onto the person in front of us. The more aware we become of that, the more we're truly able to be present and see the person who's in front of us. All right, my beautiful friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you are wanting support on your romantic relationships, whether you're single or whether you're in a relationship right now, 
you know that you want to improve the love story that you're experiencing and creating, and you want to do it in a conscious way so that you are set up to have the quality of relationships that you want for the rest of your life. I highly recommend you check out my conscious relationship coaching program. Right now, I'm working with my clients one-to-one in this program. All you need to do is go to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash coaching, follow the button to apply, submit your application, and then if it seems like you're a good fit for the program, I will invite you first to a free one-hour coaching call with me. This call is so beneficial. You will walk away knowing exactly what you're wanting in your romantic life and what is standing in your way so that you can move forward and do the work to resolve that so that you can experience the love that you crave. Everybody gets this free call if they seem like they're a good fit. I do this because I want to know how we work together first. And I want you to be able to have that experience so that you know whether you want to prioritize that kind of work and support in your life right now. So again, head to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash coaching. Make sure you submit your application. And I look forward to connecting with you over there. See you in the next episode. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Create a Life That Is Beautiful podcast. I'm your host, Letitia Ringe, and I appreciate you so much. If you would like support one-to-one as you up-level your life, business, or relationships in a conscious, intentional, and love-focused way, then head to LetitiaRinge.com forward slash coaching. I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye. 